Hi guys, it's Jen here from Just Jen Cosplay and because it was my birthday last weekend I had friends over and this weekend I have got um, some family coming to stay I have basically done no costume <laughs> um, so this week I thought I'd talk to you about the present I bought myself which is a um, an airbrush so I am going to tell you right now I am definitely not <laughs> Uh, an expert on them. I have no idea how to use one um, and to be honest with you I've only just really started learning the difference between the different types of like dual action um, you know gravity fed versus siphon fed anyway basically um, I bought myself a, a compressor separately to I saw some that were sort of bundles um, but they all seem to be quite cheap and reading the reviews were generally pretty bad saying how um, how noisy they were so what I did is I actually chose to go for a slightly more expensive compressor so I spent nearly 50 pounds on the compressor Um here it is I've literally just just opened the top that's all I've all I've seen so far um, so I thought I'd go for something a little bit more expensive um, in terms of compressor because everything I read suggested that if you buy a cheap one within a couple of months you'll be buying a new one so it's kind of a waste of money. Um, so I decided to go with somewhere about the £50 mark because that seemed to be a reasonable price to pay uh, but not super cheap. <laughs> um, uh, the reviews on this one were quite good, it said it was really quiet which for me is quite uh, handy. I don't want to be super loud because I am really bad at doing like sitting down to do costumes at like 10 o'clock at night and stuff um, or early in the morning if I wake up at 8 o'clock I start doing it and uh, yeah my neighbours and what have you don't really want to be woken up by me making lots and lots of noise um, so yeah uh, I will get that out in a minute and what I'm going to <laughs> going to do is following on from my good old theme of you know my first cosplay, my first masquerade and everything, um, my first contacts, my first wig etc etc. I'm gonna go my 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 first try of this. Uh, was it? I think it was either last week or the week before I showed you my first use of a soldering iron. Um, again for better or worse. Um, so you can all laugh at my noobness when I do this. Um, yeah on the flip side I went for a super duper duper cheap um, airbrush. So again, things that I read suggested that going for a cheaper airbrush to begin with would make very little difference um, because actually until you've got the skill to use a more expensive one, it's going <laughs> to look like an amateur is using it anyway. Although again, everything suggests that uh, an airbrush, no matter how cheap and how rubbish, is going to be better than hand painting it. Um, so hopefully that will be alright. So there we go, yeah, this was literally just £10 Amazon Prime, I think it was like £10.71 or something. but. Um, yeah, ooh look, airbrush. I've not even opened it yet. <laughs> um, I can't find my scissors when I want them, of course. Um, so yeah, what I'll do is I'll get this unwrapped and then I will show you what I've got. <laughs> I'm hoping the two things fit together because otherwise this is going to be a really short tutorial. Um, and then yeah, we'll, we'll get on with spraying probably the bits for the foam f for the feet. Um, so somewhere here, here you go, just like with Sylvanas I made some little boot covers. Uh, now that really is as simple as three pieces of uh, light lycra or four way stretch fabric whatever you want to call that. Um, yeah. And then it literally just slides onto the front of the boot like that. Then velcros around the back. I haven't put the velcro on yet. Um, and on this, I'll be sticking my bits of foam that I've already primed. Oh, sorry, that's wrong. It's that way. That way. And that bit there. So you'll end up with uh, the foot armour as well. But uh, with no damage to the boot. That's exactly what I did with a Sylvanas boot. So if you want to see that in a little bit more detail, I'm it's somewhere in one of my videos, <laughs> so you can watch that. Um, um, so I'll probably just try it on that because it's already been primed and everything. And I also went over it once with some gesso, but you can see how how bad 
I know it's only like a an undercoat with the gesso. Um, I had already sprayed them once with the seal prime, but at the moment I'm not confident with just doing it once. And I then ran out of seal prime, um, so I'm gonna have to buy buy some more. Um, so yeah, you can see how streaky it is. So I'm hoping that uh, learning to use my lovely new toy will make it <laughs> a lot less streaky. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll say, I'll get this all unwrapped and then I'll see what I can show you. <laughs> so as I said, it was super cheap. It comes with a little dripper to put um, the paint in. So I decided to go for a dual action, which means that you, when you want to release uh, any paint, you push down and then to control the amount of paint that you want to release, you pull back. Um, that means that obviously as you're going along, you can change the flow of how much you're putting through. Um, whereas some of the others, you'll just have a trigger and then you'll have to change um, like the, the nozzle bit. Uh, I can't remember what they're called, but that's, that's called dual action. Um, I went with Gravity Fed purely because it uh, this one was £10. Um, there's other ones that you sort of have a, the bit of paint that sits in here um, and it's somehow siphoned in, but I don't really know. This is as simple as uh, you put the paint in and gravity lets it flow down. Um, so there we go. So a lot simpler than I thought. This little bit just came off the bottom here and then that's fitted on there. I'm guessing you want to make sure it's quite tight, but don't make, make sure you don't sort of ruin the thread. And then this bit, <clears throat> just goes on this nozzle bit here um, and then that's it ready ready to go so uh, yeah really really easy to set up I'm, I'm really pleased with that I thought it would be a little bit of me kind of like figuring stuff out but um, yeah and it's even got a little carry handle eee! okay so now, now I will go and plug it in I promise <laughs> So this is where I'm showing that my craft room is not exactly the perfect place to do um, on-the-spot filming of stuff. Um, so as you can see, I've just covered my lovely craft table in some uh, newspaper. And this is just a bit of scrap cardboard that I've put there for when I'm spraying, just to make sure that uh, I don't make any mess on my wall. I'm not going not gonna to be <laughs> really angry if I do, because to be fair, I didn't paint this wall. <laughs> this is what it was when I moved in. Um, I do have the windows open, so I've got two windows in here, um, and I've got my door open as well, so it is quite well ventilated. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. Um, I am now going to turn it on, and I'm hoping I'm not going to deafen everybody. If it is super loud, I will edit this out. So, um... oh, lovely. Okay. So that's that's not particularly noisy at all. But it has gone all the way up quite high to about 50 psi on here so um this bit here is showing how high it is and as i'm spraying it out so i'm just using there's no paint in it or anything at the moment so i'm literally just air spraying it's then filling it back up um, so it's a bit high at the moment. My understanding is that I probably want it at about 20. So I'm going to fiddle around and figure out how I make it go down. <laughs> um, let's see, it fills it back up again. I probably need to stick this down because you can see it's moving. So that's obviously why it comes with the, uh, the sticky feet. Even that's not on the table properly. Um, so... Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> I shouldn't be um, this excited about something quite so simple, but because um, it is probably going to take me a while, I'm probably going to end up spending more time figuring out how, how to actually s use spray paint, um, sorry, air, airbrushing, I should say, um, than just painting it myself. But it will be a really good learning curve for me, and I'm hoping it will make the finished result look a lot better. Um, just wanted to briefly show you this whilst it's up there. Um, is the breastplate so you can see it's coming along I've managed to paint over a bit more where it was cracking um, and I've just gone over where the green bits are going to go um, it was just really because it it gives it a bit more definition um, and it made me a bit more excited because I was looking at it going oh it looks awful um, so yeah by putting the green on it it has made me a little bit happy with it um, 
So yeah, what I'm going to do now is um, I am going to use some of the paint that I've already got. So for example, the green, I'd already bought this. So I'm not going to go out and then buy some proper um, airbrushing paints to go with it. But I have read that you can just water down um, any acrylic paint. Uh, <laughs> any acrylic paint um, to a sort of milky consistency. And then you can use it in the airbrush. So I am going to try it and then I will show you the results. Here you go, so I've got the lid off and everything, mixed up a bit of paint. I'm probably going to regret this massively, like basically I regretted trying to put contact lenses in in front of my camera for the first time. Um, but here we go, here we go anyway, she says, not knowing where I've actually just put my little squeezer. Tell you what, it's all very well somebody saying, oh roughly the consistency of milk, and you start going, what the hell does milk look like? Um, so I'm hoping that I've done it right. But I'm just going to go with, I'm not going to fill it up. I'm just going to put a bit in and then pop that back on. I hope that I've set it to 20 now, which was really, really easy actually. It was just a case of lifting this up and turning it to where I wanted it to be. So that was, that was fine. Um, turn it back on. Probably get this out of the way in case. Ooh. Okay, so it's coming out quite nicely actually but I have already uh, probably made it too I don't know whether it's too wet what's coming out or whether it's me that has uh, maybe put too much on um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try a little bit more I don't know this is probably literally like watching paint dry for you guys so um, what I'll do is I will turn this off uh, and so you can't see my, all my double chins um, and I'll do a little bit more and then I will come back and I'll just let, let you know how it's going so I've just done a little bit more um, and yeah, really pleased with, with how it's going. Um, I don't know if you can see in comparison to, probably just worth putting it next to this one. Um, you can't really see, you can see it's just a little bit more even now in this one. Um, but obviously this is also wet now. Um, one of the things I did read that in some cases it's probably worth taking the little nozzle bit that's on the end of the, um, of the ne ne needle <laughs> sprayer um, because as you can see in there if it will focus no it's too busy focusing on me okay anyway there is some excess paint in there so obviously that's stuff that I'm wasting um, which isn't which is fine if I'm just making up quite cheap paint but if I start buying the like there's a brand name, it's something like the Vallejo or something, um, that is like supposedly like the brand to buy if you're buying it pre mixed to go in a sprayer. Um then yeah, I'm gonna want to not be wasting wasting it. So I'm gonna try it a little bit without that on and, and see what the difference is. Because I've just got it on quite a wide angle, because obviously I'm just trying to do a, a, a whole layer, um, and I don't want it to be too thick. Um but yeah, it's not not too bad. I, I'm. I expected there to be a lot more mess for my first first time. So um, either I have just picked really well with what I've gone for. Um, it could just be that I've I've done lots of painting and sort of craft and stuff over the years, over my many years in life. Um, so it could just be that that I'm already quite um, artistic and creative. So I kind of know what. I'm doing it's quite intuitive that's one of the things I'd say about this is that it feels really I already know what I'm doing now don't get me wrong I know I'm not going to be an expert anytime soon and, and like detail work and and all the sort of shading and stuff is going to take me forever to learn but um yeah it feels like it's really gonna speed speed up painting let's hope fingers crossed so I'm still here 
just wanted to show you the difference between the one layer. Uh, I'm getting used to it and you can see it's still a bit blotchy, but in comparison to this, which is all streaky, um, yeah, much, much better. Um, and I'm sure as I get better with the technique, then that will help. One of the things I have sort of noticed is that you really want to go in very sort of slow, deliberate movements, none of this sort of backwards and forwards, very quick movements that I was trying to do to begin with. So yeah, um, trying to keep it really gentle and deliberate with the movements. But um, yeah, I'm about to do this one um, and then I will stop torturing you by being this close and I'll do my little outro video in a bit. I'm just going to try this. It might be a really bad video, but um, hopefully I'll show you what I'm doing. Sometimes it's quite difficult to know whether it's actually doing anything. <laughs> because obviously I'm doing white on white, it's not making a huge amount of difference. Um, but then I get to some of the blotchier bits and I can see, see more of a difference. there you have it I hope you enjoyed that uh, I've actually really enjoyed myself uh, uh, it's taken a little while um, but I'm starting to get used to it um, just so you know I have now cleaned it all so um, obviously I've just gone and taken it taken it all apart and it's all fresh as a daisy inside um, when I did buy it, I did also buy a little bit of um, airbrush cleaner. Oh, put the lid back on that. Um, only used a tiny little bit um, in, in it at the end, so it's like a solvent. Um, so it just gets, helps to get rid of it. You can just do it with water because acrylic is water, ba water based. I think that's right. Um, water will just wash it out, but I just felt like... Uh, every, every every single thing that I read said that like, the most important thing that you can do, no matter how much you spent on your um, airbrush or your compressor, everything, um, then is cleaning it at the end. So that is what I've just done, and I say just a little tiny bit of that in it. Um, but yeah, something apparently that you have to do every single time is just make sure you clean it when you finish. Um, so I am packing up probably a little bit earlier than I'd have wanted to, but I've spent a good 10 minutes just, just cleaning, cleaning this, maybe a little bit more, but it's so pretty. Mm. I feel like I need to be like really sexy with it. Mm -hmm. What do you think? <laughs> Not that I do sexy particularly well, more like a derp face. Um, anyway. I hope you found that useful. If you do have any questions for me, um, then by all means, uh, do do drop me a line. Uh, I am in two minds right now as to whether or not to actually say what I've bought um, because I know nothing. So me going, hey, this is what I bought, guys, is like in a few weeks it might all break. Um, so what I might do is is wait and in when I do perhaps the, like the, the next costume if it's still working and I'm getting better with it um, at that point I'll link to it maybe unless you really 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 want to know in which case do ask me um, and I'll just send you a link it's fine <laughs> I just don't want to go like promote it and going hey buy this and actually it turns out to be awful um, on that note, I am not affiliated with it in any any way. I bought this with my own money. Well, actually, with money from my dad for my birthday. Um, so, uh, yeah. Not sponsored. Um, what else? I am... That's it. That's it. That's all I have. That's all I have for you guys. I don't know if you can see. I'm wearing black. Um, Luna's molting. My my husky is is molting. There is fur everywhere. My life is just fur. She doesn't really come in this room, so this tends to be a a generally fur free zone. Um, but at the moment, my entire house is like it's just so much. Um, but being the weird little nerd that I am, I decided that I would start to collect it up um, because my mum makes felt in some of her classes that she goes to so I thought that if 
I, I, I once I've got the whole bag full, um, I'll donate it to that. It's a um, community art studio, and um, they can see if they can make felt with that. Because I know my mum has used some of the fur off her cats before, but she mixed that in with a sheep's wool where they made the felt. Um, literally, I don't know if if you've ever made felt, you basically get get wool and um, you make it wet. That. <laughs> in a very very simple way then there's lots of squeezing and and rolling and all sorts but um uh it's just wet wool that is is what makes felt so um i'm really hoping that they can make husky felt and i don't know whether this can become like a new thing that we can get all husky owners to to keep the fur of their huskies i'm really lucky that the stuff that's coming out of luna is is all white um, so it'll be really easy for them to dye as well because uh, again at her studio they do um, like all natural dyes so they'll go out and they'll use I don't know daffodils I don't know if it's daffodils at all um, to make yellow and, and whatever anyway you get the idea I really enjoy that so that was great I, I can't wait to do some more of that and I really hope that you guys are gonna like how this looks um, just uh, like you can see here all the brush strokes so I'm hoping that by the time this is finished you won't be able to see all of the brush strokes but we will see won't we um, that's one for a few weeks time I suppose um, I am trying to get all this finished for Cos Expo which is on the 24th of March and it's taking place at the University of Reading um, fingers crossed <laughs> I'll get it done because I haven't even started on the most complex bit which is like the waist skirt belt thing um, well I've made a pattern that's as far as I've got um, well, so so who knows it might not be ready but but fingers crossed it it will be and um, yeah I, I hope to show you some real progress next week um, anyway <laughs> as I said Hope you found that helpful and uh, if you did you can give me a like, give me a subscribe and you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter all under Just Jen Cosplay. Um, yeah, have a great week guys and I'll see you next week.